Oops. Welcome to the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast. You can find us at www.lifthavyrunlong.com on Twitter and Instagram at Lift Run Long. Also, feel free to email me directly at the address Wilson at LiftHeavyRunLong.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, you should be because we want you to be there. Search for Lift Heavy Run Long Community and request to join right now. My name is Wilson Horrell. I'm one of your hosts. I would like to remind you that the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast is not censored. So listen at your own risk. I am joined to my right by the most wonderful woman in the world, Dr. Amanda Kimsey Horrell, Jack and Tan. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How about you? Thank you for your patience. Yeah. This has been a tumultuous start to our podcast. It's an interesting video that we were watching. You're spinning over there. I don't even know, man. <laughs> hey, we're not. Hey, you got an E for effort. It's probably internet. We don't have any internet in here. We almost figured it out. We almost had it. It was close. But as long as we're recording for YouTube, that's what matters. That's yep. right. So everyone can watch. To a man is right. We have Sean R. D. Hizzy Hillsden. How y'all doing? How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Good. Brian Williams. Howdy. How are we? Amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you both. You've yeah. walked in here. Sean brought us a pizza. <laughs> I ate a piece of it. <laughs> Brian has brought us hats. something. I didn't want to be outdone by Almira, so I uh, oh. had, had to pass out the hats. Right. Uh, Thank you. Yes. This is my favorite Look time. Look at that. I like the blue. These, These are like, sharp hats. Yeah. It's like Christmas for me. You, to you dig the flat big bill. Hill upon, yeah, to add yeah. one of these hats. So I can wear this having not finished this race. That's appropriate. Those hats are for volunteers and people that have contributed to the race in a meaningful way. Okay. So you're good to go. Well, that's the same. I don't have a sticker on my car because of that. I don't want to put that on there. And so then the hats, I didn't know how that. Yeah. Yeah. He takes all the stickers off my car anyway. Well, he, he's this is coming which. from the guy who throws his medals in the garbage when he gets done with it. <laughs> oh, we're one up in Elmira with <laughs> these stickers. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh they're fancy. Uh, look, at uh, look at that. Take that, okay. Michael. Wow. So I, I, I can put this on my vehicle. You can. Right. You can. And you can have the rest of these. Okay. It's almost like a hologram. Like this it is a hologram. I think. Uh, wow. Got a little Sasquatch in the back there. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah. Ah. You know what? I think Michael. Was That's awesome. Forgot these. He had some. He must have had some. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. As thoughtful as he is and as much as he cares, certainly. Right. All right, we're back on. Ricky said to sit up so he could see you guys. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> well, we were so comfortable. <laughs> man. The Reverend Harry, I didn't even introduce you. You know how I am about the formalities. Um, I'm a man who needs no introduction. That's right. So, that's why I can skip you. That's the beauty of putting you way right. over there. It don't yeah. even have to get to you. I could even sit in Brian Swanson's spot if I wanted to. Did you notice how when it got to you, the, the internet kicked back on? Yeah. That's how much you mean to this show. That's, uh, I put that energy out. <laughs> yeah. so the wizard at Comcast up. was like, give yeah. him more juice. Yeah. It's the reverend. <laughs> what, you don't have fiber yet, obviously. Uh, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they've strung it. They just haven't hooked us up yet. Oh, yep. man, man. Uh, my uh, fiber went out today oh, oh no no at like noon and i had like a zoom call a very important <laughs> zoom call uh-huh. like job interview at like two and i lost my oh mind. <laughs> i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do and i was texting my wife i was like the internet's out i was like gonna move all of my computer i was gonna just load it all in my car and go to my mother-in-law's house who lives right down the street yeah and i was like i don't know when how do i fix this and then it just came back on. Man, I bet you were freaking. <laughs> like, we but, got a hotspot, right, for a backup? No, I don't. Oh, the no. iPhones have them, I think. Hey, I, I, I didn't really mean to make a bus there. I was just making an observation. No, I, I don't know that I would trust a wife, uh, cell phone hotspot for something very important, like an important yeah. meeting. I agree. Yeah. Like where you don't, you know. I can see that. 
Yep, yep. So I like almost had a heart attack and died today. And then it came back on and everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know my my day's really been put in perspective. I, I sent Amanda hearing you say that. I sent Amanda a text that was like, I, "I've legit lost my mind over this Facebook audio thing." I said, "I, I can't I get out of this yeah. hole." Um, you know, you're seeing me testing it at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I saw all of them. I, um, I would see one, and then like a couple of hours later, another one would pop up, and it was like only admins can see this live feed. And I was like clicking on it, and then and then I would unmute it and then i would turn my volume up and then turn my volume up louder <laughs> and i'd be like no nah, i'm not hearing anything and, and then, at one but point a couple time, times i heard something i heard you talking i was like i hear you yeah I hear you. but then i don't even know if you're seeing that feedback at all so at one know. point in time i finally said i'm done i'm i'm doing an order this stuff i'm not even gonna mess with it i'm putting it away and as soon as i walk in i get behind my computer and the den i see where Brian had posted in Walking Tall, we're going to be live at 7.15. I'm like, yeah. God dang it, son of a bitch. So I come back out here. Then I wind up going to two Best Buys. <laughs> I send Amanda a text. It's like, I, this is out of hand. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself. And she's like, sorry so late to, to respond. I've been down in ICU for three code strokes today. And, three codes. You know, I'm like, <laughs> we actually flipped a coin about that this morning. And then at the end of the day, we said – you would want us to do that so we did that do right. what facebook post oh yeah we i would have wanted you to right. that's what i did we want. actually yeah we, we i can't believe it. i disappointed you and i'm thinking about sean the engineer and you know every all the things i should be able to do that i just can't we still love you but we got it working yeah kind of it's through all, a phone it sucks uh one way or another come october you're gonna have a badass race happen with yeah, we'll the have world, audio. The world, <laughs> no fear. The world's greatest stage station will be there. Walking so. Tall, the fourth. Fourth, fourth annual. Boy, four years goes by fast. I know. It's yep. unbelievable. Holy moly. Man, it seems like just yesterday. Really. And it's gotten easier or more difficult? It gets bigger. So does that make it more difficult every year? So or? a little bit more difficult, but we're only adding things one at a time now. You know, instead of everything is brand spanking new, we've only got to deal with one or two new issues every year. So it's it's still nerve wracking, and it's getting to be a huge event. So there's a lot of logistics and a lot of people involved. But you know, basically, I'm not as worried about it. You know, for the first year, I was worried about it every single day. You know, you have people flying in, and you're responsible for them, and making sure that the race is a great race, and now it just seems like it's coming together. So year two was easier than year one. Absolutely. And three's been easier than two. And yeah. So on, so on and so, so forth. forth. Yeah. Except for the COVID hiccup, but you know. Ah, that, yeah. That was that threw us a big curveball. Y'all seem to y'all seem to strike at that pretty well. The, I mean, the stars the stars aligned for us. It just so happened that we were set for a race that we didn't know was going to be able we were going to be able to go to in Idaho. Uh, until they, we figured out which phase they were going to pass, you know, as far as if you had to quarantine once you came in the state lines and all that. But it was the first race that we knew of that actually created from scratch uh, a COVID response plan and then executed it. And we we actually felt like we got front row seats because we ran the race, got to experience it, and then we turned around, got permission to to basically build a foundation um, of what became our COVID response plan for Walk and Tall last year and. You know, I mean, seeing it in action was, the, I mean, we were convinced when we got back, like, we got this. Did y'all have a dialogue with those race directors as far as what they had going on? Could they share any of that information? And we, I mean, were we they helpful? Talk, we talked yeah, to them absolutely. A bit. They were the very brothers. helpful. They they let us steal what we needed to steal and, and use what we needed to use. And it was, it was great. Good. Is the biggest decision to make the, the ethical side of things, the legal side of things, or is it getting someone in charge of authority that'll say you can have this or you can't have this you can't have it does that make any sense it it does make sense but i think sean will agree we were bound and determined to give it a whirl to try and get some kind of normal back into what was going on you know we were willing to do whatever it took for somebody to say yes and we really believed in our heart we could put on a safe race yeah so we just pushed and pushed and uh you know luckily the the ranger justin uh, king is is behind us 100 percent, and so we didn't catch much feedback from the park or you know push back from the park yeah. uh you know everybody was all in uh for those listening 
you know, the race does huge things for the park. And so yeah. they really wanted us there as much as we wanted yeah. to be there. So it was a positive thing all the way around. And I feel like you're, I could be wrong, but like trail runners are like the first people to not care about. <laughs> I don't want to say safety, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, like it's hygiene, it's safety, right, bacteria, right, like, it's lightning. It's like, oh well, we're we'll running. It's, it's good. You're not, you're not going to have a problem with the clients <laughs> wanting to run the race. Like, I feel like it's all about the opposite side because everyone's going to want to come run as long yeah. as someone just says, "Yeah, y'all can come run." Right. We, we actually had our most of these turnout. people are coming here to die. Right. So, the, the disappointment would be if they right. live and go home and get COVID and die. Right. So, yeah, I've, I've worked the aid station side of, of y'all's race for the last three years. And uh, just Justin, the way he works with you guys and us and goes around and does his rounds and checks on everybody at the aid stations. And they feed us, you know, um, I don't know if that's through you guys or through the, the it park. Is, okay. But so. he's just so nice and makes sure everything's good. and. It's just awesome. Everybody works together really well. Uh, the race runs very well. You guys put on a very organized race. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Justin does an amazing job. You know, he's he's excellent at what he does for a living. You know, um, he really he finds problems before problems happen, and he, nice. he will go to the right person that might be in charge of that problem way before you know before the issue shows up. He's fixing it, which really makes things easy. I think the train is a unique part of the race and I like it and I like to see the race runners come down trying to beat the train. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gavin and Chloe love that. Love that train. Oh, I'm sure. I think it's an extra yeah. challenge for some of them to like get there before or after the train. So, so he slows the, he slows the train down every year. Yeah. That thing should just be hauling yes. through really? there and he and calls they slow the, it yeah, down. they slow it down for the race. They do slow yeah. and they start blowing uh, longer distances out. For safety yeah. reasons, Absolutely. of course. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, my my big question is: Are y'all changing the token this year? What's on the? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Every year we've changed it. It's yeah, unique so far, to the yeah. year. Okay, cool. Because sometimes you know they get race directors get lazy and they start like repeating the same thing, and I like to see different things. No, we've already put the order in for the coin, the challenge coin cool. this year, and it is completely different. All right. 2021 date the whole nine yards. Nice. And it'll the colors will match. Oh, this man. year's colors. That's, That's awesome. kind of what it's become is we, we turn around in January sometime, something sometime in January when all the other races are kicking up and we're on that big, you know, winter race uh, mindset. And we sit down and over a couple phone calls, some emails and, you know, some help from uh, Andy with Atomic Graphics, uh, we we knock out the color scheme by January usually. Hmm. And then that helps set, sets up everything else. Well, Brian, I, Brian and I were talking before the podcast, y'all have done such a good job of bringing good vibes bring about nostalgia and this race has become every part of it is nostalgic everything from the the axe handles the i mean the big sticks to the you know the the fire tower all that stuff is things that could be well that's a cool fire i mean the park's got a lot of history that most people wouldn't even you know you'd have to go digging for it i guess if you wanted to know about it but it's got so much history that that, that part's easy. You know, I mean, it, the park literally sells itself. I know we say that every time we come on here, but it's just got a lot of kind of crazy history. And it's been a part of a lot of stuff for it to be such a hidden place and not known about in surrounding metro areas. You know, it's probably one of the prettiest parks I've ever ran in. I it's very it. pretty. Do they I say agree. there's an overflow to the race like throughout the year? Do you think more people visit because they know that it's there? Um, because of y'all's event? Absolutely. Even the first year. So after the first year, attendance to the park in general went up 30%. Oh, 30%. Oh, wow. so, and it's, it's, That's it's, awesome. It's, wow. it's over 100% since then. I mean, so it's it's amazing. The, the campsites are actually selling out now when it's not race weekend. I mean, like, there is true visitation uh, all year round now there. The park has truly benefited. That's impressive. That's awesome. Did y'all have a relationship with the, the park ranger's prior to this not i mean really. you live around you I, have I a live house around there around and I, you know i basically ran out there for years and years and never saw a park ranger um and then just happenstance one day came across one and was talking about putting on a race out there you know we had been talking about it for a long time and uh i just got to talking with the guy and I, it wasn't justin it was the the jim who's the other park ranger and I, you know i asked i said we've been talking about putting a race on out here would you be interested in that 
And he said, uh, yeah, we'd love it. You know, just off the cuff, no big deal. You know, that's not going to happen, whatever. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Exactly, yeah. And I was like, don't say yes unless you want to race because we're going to put one on if you say yes. And he said yes. And, you know, two months later I was in his office with blueprints and, you know, spreading out. <laughs> this, is how, this is how we're going to do it. So. Man. That's incredible. How much liability is involved in a race? Like how, are attorneys involved in, in what y'all are doing? So we have to get – uh, event insurance so we get event insurance for the park and we get event insurance for ourselves um, luckily we've had not a not an issue we've had a couple turned ankles but nothing serious but it's not a huge issue with the with the extra insurance about the only attorneys we ever had to have involved was when we were trying to get uh, that's right i forgot yeah approved for the name usage Oh yeah, walk and tall. Yeah, so there's a walk. Oh, and tall. I bet there. I bet there is a. There lot are of that. movies, and there's a museum, and you know, several different uh, people got involved trying to get us permission us to use to the name. The, yeah, because mm-hmm. we wanted to tie something to the park and to the area. You know, if we're going to be there, we want the money to go to the park and the area, and so we wanted some nostalgia, like you were talking about nostalgia, and. Uh, I mean, I don't know what would have happened if we'd have named it anything else. Yeah, I, mean, I don't it, either. It it just. It threw the theme together with the big sticks and the finishers items, and you know we actually went to the museum, and you know, I think it, it was, was divine intervention. I'm surprised that y'all that y'all were able to pull that off. Just going through what we went through to trademark LHRL, you know, there's so much of a waiting time, and so many things sound similar that I mean, y'all are naming it after something that is clearly after something. So it just seems like there would be a lot of people wanting to shut that down. So you, you had on. to have someone say, okay, yes, you can use that name. We had the McNary County uh, Chamber, their attorney, look into it and, oh, wow. and approve oh, wow. everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of y'all awesome. said, let's just put on the event and hope nobody says anything? That was me. I was <laughs> abs- absolutely. It was just like, who, who's going to ever know, right? I mean, I absolutely was like, we're in. Just use it. Who yeah. cares? If we can just make it through the first what year. Are, I don't yeah, care what, what they say. We're in. <laughs> what are the odds that anybody from that office is even going to know there's a race yeah. happening? Uh, and luckily, we did it uh, timely because the uh, the daughter, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but uh, she passed away last year, I think, two years ago. It was right. Yeah. It was about. It was right after the first year we had our thing, and you know, I think that's who the channeling went through at first to get the from the movie rights to make sure everything was good there. Hmm. So, so Buford Pusser's daughter passed away. Oh, really? Not too long ago. And she's the one that gave the go ahead on it. We don't know, but yeah. I mean, it was, she was everything involved. went through. Obviously, she's definitely yes. involved right. with the family. Yeah, and, right. of course. Have y'all had anybody come back to you on those sprained ankles or anything about the event? Any callbacks of this happened and y'all need to do this? No, not as far as like you need to do this. Certainly people, you know, I hurt my ankle and, you know, you just laugh and rub it off. That's trail running and you keep moving. (laughs) Good for you. Are they still walking? Are they still walking? Are they in their car? Just rub some dirt on your feet. Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone does that, like, they're learning a lesson pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the wrong run. spot or they need to do something different. I've only had to go in and uh, extricate one person from the race. I've had to relocate a guy that got lost the first year and put him back where I knew he had gotten lost at. And he ended up doing an extra, you know, four or five miles. And, uh, but yeah, last year was the first time I actually had to go take my truck and pick somebody up and, uh, and bring her out back to the end. And I know, it, I know it hurt her feet, you know, I know she was devastated and stuff, but she came back in a big way. Yeah, she is. She's yeah. winning things now. She is, yeah. Well, there was a gentleman there last year that he must have gotten lost four times. <laughs> and he just kept and I and I I'm just standing there like an idiot pretending like I'm writing names down and talking to every person <laughs> that, that I see. And uh, you know, Michael's trying to get him on the right path and I'm thinking, Man, out here you're getting lost in this stuff, like making up miles would suck. For real suck. And I don't know how to handle that. I'm not gonna be the guy that's like Hey, number one forty-eight is disqualified because he, you know, that was your job, though. Uh, no, it wasn't he either. My the- job was the right people's <laughs> names. Down. No, 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 I, I, don't I didn't even point him in the right direction. Yeah, I just, just wrote the number down. Kind of spun him a few times. He just and wrote and the number over and over, and over again. I just pretended to write his number down like I did everybody else. He got a bat and you spun him and <laughs> pushed him. That's off like into Tom the Hanks off a league of their own. You know, I was told to come out here, wave my little hat at the crowd, and I did that. So when do I get paid? <laughs> Man, I've, I've been out there, I, I think it's like 
two o'clock or something that people have to leave that aid station. Yeah, two thirty. And like, yeah, two, some whatever it is. And like, I remember one guy came down, and it was like right at. Yes. It was might have even been two thirty two or something, and I'm going. My thing is the ranger won't let you go. Like I'm not. Yes. It's not me. Put, put it off on it's somebody else. Look, That's exactly right. Do you see that guy? That guy over says there? no dice he with said, a gun. You <laughs> and so I was like, man, it's not me. It's the ranger. And looked over at the ranger, and he goes, send him through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he totally. <laughs> yes. It's, it's I, good. <laughs> I, got, I got out of that altogether. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I know I've been places and and come in to cut off times and you get to that aid station and they do send you through and you're like son of a bitch. <laughs> I wish I, was you, already, I had my heart set on them pulling me. It being their fault and being able to go on home. Yeah. And then you're like, oh man, turn it around on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a fine race that y'all put on there. The uh, the shuttles that y'all get to pick people up. Who is that? Just. Do y'all just rent those, or is that a company that brings that stuff out there? So, again, the chamber has donated that every year, except for last year because of COVID. No bus because of COVID last year. So, oh. I don't know with everything lightening up this year whether we'll be able to do a bus or not. But, it you know, it's getting easier and easier as more, you know, more masks go away mm-hmm. and more people are opening their doors with 100% capacity and all that. So, you know, fingers crossed we'll be back to putting people on buses. What's the plan in the future? Are you going to keep on growing this thing as, as big as you can? 375 is it. I don't think the it, – it changes the, the race, I think. Uh-huh. You know, the trail race feel, if you get too uh-huh. big, it just becomes too much. I mean, there, there comes a point where you don't have any alone time on the trail, and, you know, that's what trail running is, is you want some, you know, come-to-Jesus moments you along and out in the woods. You have to get mm-hmm. yourself yeah, out of it. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. How many are, how many are you at now, like? Uh, Registration-wise, we take 150 50 cares, and we've got 101 already, and we're still five months out. And then we're 60% done. We take 225 uh, 25 cares, and that always sells out, you know, just lightness. All of a sudden, one day, somebody will notice it, that it's getting close, and, you know, you'll lose 75 spots. It'll be sold out overnight, just about. Do y'all have a lot of issues with... Uh, want to trade my bid? Want to trade or sell? Or y'all, do y'all have a lot of issues with that? Is it hard to weeks. deal with? The last couple of weeks, it, it's it is the most cumbersome part of the race, but it makes the most money for the race because of the way we've done it. Most, almost to the man and lady. Uh, people will donate their bib if they can't come. Instead of trying yeah. to sell it, they'll yeah. donate it and say, "Please, you know, sell it." to the next man or woman on the wait list. And so what ends up happening is we sell 275 bibs for the nice. 25K. Okay. And uh, we get to keep all that money. It goes to the park. park I mean, yeah. Well, it that's all, good to know. To, I never knew you could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. if I have a bib that I've already bought and I'm not going to be able to do it, I can say I want to donate it back and someone else can buy it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Wow. And that's, so it keeps the perfect. race full too. It's very you know, easy for us to do that because I mean we we volunteer our time. We you know we don't make any money off of this. Obviously, yeah. we gave everything to the park plus some. So I think that everybody kind of jumps on board that train and understands that hey you know these guys are for the park. Just for your cause. It's all yeah. It's all hundred percent charity. I haven't been on the site recently. Do you all have just a donation place on your website for them for the park? Um, we do not. You know, but two years ago we started friends of the Fort, friends of Big Hill Pond State Park, okay. and so um, we don't have a per se donation place but if you wanted to donate you know all you basically do is would make a check to to friends of big hill pond state park and send it well to you the become park. a member there's a membership well you can be a member as oh, well okay. but if yeah, you wanted to donate i mean you just mail it to the park and they make the deposit into the friends account which comes right back you know 100 percent to the park okay did you know i wasn't gonna be able to make it to the race this year I didn't until just just recently. Beach my, trip. my feelings are hurt. I almost walked out. He picked the dates, yeah. y'all. He that's picked what the you dates. Get with, I watched the podcast. So well, that's what <laughs> I asked Brian if he heard. It. He said, "No, I couldn't hear anything." You know, <laughs> I couldn't hear it. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> that just means I'm stepping up my aid station. You got training. to. That's right. Yeah, man. Again. Sorry, Vaughn. So, well, you just got to add a bookmark to his uh, Google out. search for uh, YouTube. That way, he'll get it afterwards. <laughs> you got to follow up. So, well, that'll be that'll be something that is going to be terribly sad. To, to miss terribly hard. I've already gone through the grieving process. Man, since I, I have I'm kind of surprised you I'm haven't talked to your mom and leaving a day early. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even really thought about there's, that. There's time to work it out. Yeah, we'll get you, we'll get you there. 
Maybe we should see what kind of condition I'm in first. Maybe a <laughs> blessing in disguise. Well, I ran the 25. I skipped the aid station and ran the 25K last year. I know. I was sad. And man, Didn't have my buddy. It was awesome. I'm, I'm really glad you did that. Yeah, I'm, I'm super glad it. you ran it, I'm too. telling you, that's one of the funnest races I've ever ran. Do y'all remember when I crossed I, the finish line? I cried. I told yeah, it was yeah. the hardest oh, yeah. 50K I've ever ran. <laughs> I mean, I, I got one of the, the best hugs I think I've ever gotten that day. That was, yeah. That was good. That was that was emotional. That was it was a good race. It was also very challenging. It um, was. It was. I don't want to say it was the, the hardest because it's so like I like that trail so much. I mean, it, it was difficult. It was clearly oh yeah, very it's not difficult easy at all. But I mean, it's just so much like if if I'm comparing it to to Swamp Stomper, like Swamp Stomper to me is is hard, but it's like painful and it's a lot of like walking tall is just a lot more. I don't know. I just enjoy it a lot. I really, really like the terrain of that trail. It's not too much for too long at any one point. And it changes. About every three miles, you get some different, you know, topography. All yes. of a sudden, yeah. you're, That's what you're I'm talking in about. a swamp yeah. or yeah. you're on, you know, some, some really short, choppy stuff. Or you might even have a little flat section. That, you know, the 50K has a good three-mile stretch where yes. you can really at leg it out. At a perfect place. Back. Yes, right after the choppy. Yep. You know, which I think that right before that is probably the hardest part of the race, in my opinion. Uh huh. Right. Um, yeah, it is. It's the most climbing, anyway. I like that little loop where my aid station is. The dogwood loop. I like yeah. that a lot. Yes. I like that's probably my favorite. And part it of feels the race. totally different going yeah. the other direction. So when you come back through <laughs> on the 50K, you get a totally different feel going going the other way, washing machine style. Mm-hmm. I'd I like say if the, you came uh, out and ran it one time, you know, if it was your first time, you wouldn't be able to tell that you're on the same trail. I mean, you. I agree. I like that flat bottom bridge where it's like, a, what is it, like a, um, I guess it's like a mile. Yeah, it's or, right at a little over, well, almost a three quarters of a mile. Three quarters of yeah. a mile. And, that and bridge is three quarters of a mile. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just got, cause, because, just because you're on trail the whole time and I hit that thing and I was like, oh yeah, I'm trucking now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you know, I'm, like, I'm like running like an eight minute mile. Thank goodness we sand it every year. You know, we spend, you know, the day before throwing sand on that thing. It is slick. Is it? Oh my gosh, yes. So yeah. you come back across it at mile 22 on the 50K. Oh, well, see, so I didn't direction. have that experience. And it, it changed, yeah. Yeah. Well, you need I to usually your... walk it. It's probably completely different. Than <laughs> it I feels good to walk at that point. <laughs> <laughs> right. How many times a year do y'all run that course? Oh, golly. You know, I've got property six miles from the front door, so I'm out there all the time. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I'm on the course all the time. It's my go-to last long run before I taper before a big race. Mm. So I usually run it at least once a year as far as the whole course. The 50K? Yeah, last year I did it in pretty bad shape. I mean, I gained weight. I was dealing with an Achilles problem that I didn't really know at the time. And, um, we went out there to do it and it was a hot day and it ended up taking me about eight and a half hours. Um, which is about an hour and a half longer than it, than it normally does. Yeah. And it was just a hot day and everybody else kind of vamped out on me at 20 miles. So I was out there. I pretty much ran it by myself the last, well, I ran five miles or so with the, to the first aid station. And then I got separated cause I was just so well, slow. You're, you're saying you go out there, with no aid stations, I set up my own. Oh, I yeah, put a, I'll yeah, put a water drop. Put a, yeah, I'll yeah. put a water drop out there. I've got all my nutrition. But on there's me. not people waiting on you. No, <laughs> you're just <out> there. <laughs> as long as I got a cooler <laughs> no. with some water in it. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Sean's fan club. <laughs> oh, go, Sean! <laughs> it's his big run. <laughs> but it, it is. I mean, there is something to be said about running it by yourself. Just self. Oh yeah. It's, you go. I mean, it's, I can it's, it's a long day. <laughs> but. Not something to be said about it. That's bad. I, yeah, I can't imagine self-supporting myself for a 50K without the thought of aid stations around or people. You know, that's yeah. that's a whole new level. I've never done that before. I did put a drop bag at, at mile 16. So Oh, I well, that, that didn't count. Yeah, scratch that. <laughs> scratch everything. You're still alone. Oh, right. I'm sorry, yeah. We thought bitter you were cool. respect. It's just a bag full of body glide. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hot day. One goo body glide. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> already, the, Wilson already used before. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I have a question. So, how did the fireball get uh, into the whole thing? Was that planned, or did somebody just bring it and it just be- became a thing? Totally rogue the first year. Sweet. And became okay. a thing. Yeah. So we were kind of in trouble the first year. Didn't know it. about it until we heard, heard about yeah, it. Yeah, we didn't know about it until we heard about it. And then we asked forgiveness. <laughs> and it's gotcha. kind of, it's morphed okay. since then. So. All right. 
Yeah, I, I didn't know what to say when I got up there. I was, you know, Charlie was up there, and I'm like, oh. Which some of those pictures okay. of that first year of people taking shots, you know, were just amazing. I mean, they just really, Connor Hayden took some really fun photos up there yeah, the it first was, year. Yeah, it was fun. It was really neat to, to do that. We've got like, one old Hirons up there. Yeah, it's on, yep. Which he was, you know, he accomplished, uh, he conquered his fear of heights, you yep, know. That's right. And so when he got up there, you know, you, the big smile on his face as he's taking his – his fireball shot, you know, he's like, I did it. Yep. I was proud of that because every time we had test run anywhere that went close to that fire tower, he he wouldn't even come close to really? it. Really? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'd be running with guys, you know, four or five guys, and you'd all be up there, you know, talking and taking pictures, and you look down, Michael, <laughs> <laughs> come on up. And he, no. <laughs> no, really, come on up. Uh-uh. So. <laughs> that would be a lot. That would be – I don't have a, a – a, paralyzing fear of heights you know or especially heights like that but i certainly have unrealistic fears that will just suck all the energy out of me in dread i'm sure that running a race of that caliber for that long and having to worry about getting up something like that would be a i'm sure a serious burden and oh. to, to make it would be a great accomplishment i so, didn't i didn't like that when i went up I, I looked straight at charlie and didn't look over i couldn't do it so i just was Focused on her, turned around, went right back down. <laughs> well, Michael's definitely conquered it. You know, he's climbed it every year since then. He doesn't do really? it during the year, yeah. but race day when he required. Counts. He shows up. <laughs> That's right. He wants his new coin. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. it's funny how people get excited about fireball and beers and stuff. Like, we, uh, we had this guy at that Village Creek race. Sean was there where he came in and he was crying. And Oh, yeah. And it get, uh, Someone gave him, you want a beer? And he's like, yeah, I'll have a beer. Changed and he his drank the beer and he was like, oh, okay, I'm out. But not only that, but these people are coming in like 40 miles into a 50-mile race and like, give me that fireball. <laughs> give me, like, they're all like... <laughs> <laughs> Except to numb the pain. <laughs> you know, like, it's just a weird thing. Like, it, I never saw before, I don't know, five years, probably that race. i tell you the first time I ever took Fireball on a run was uh, the Bell Ringer back in 2017, maybe, whenever we did that. And it was the first time. I think we, we took – I took it from a guy – that was wearing like some kind of rainbow oh, pink I rainbow suit that. or something. You was, that road, unicorn, I know. I remember exactly where <laughs> yeah, you were Yeah, we were about. out on this like long road stretch. Mile 19 or 20, you know, as you're going and out toward the cemetery. I'd never even right heard there. of Fireball on, on a course, you know. And, and he, they said, he wants Fireball. And like I said, the guy's wearing, you know, some kind of pink animal outfit. <laughs> I think it may have been a unicorn. <laughs> uh, and I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I took it. And, you know, half a mile later, I was like, man, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. You know, well, just that I little did, bit yeah. of edge. I, my first 50 miler at Wachita, um, there's a, there's an aid station that's ran by like a hash runner thing where they have like yes. a cooler beer and they had a cooler of like Red Bull. And by the time I got back there, there was nobody there. Like nobody was at the aid station, but the coolers were there and there were signs going, if you want a beer, if you want a Red Bull. <laughs> and I swear to God, I opened the Red Bull and I looked at it and I was like, people drink Red Bull at these things? And I opened the other one and I was like. People drink beer at these things. <laughs> and I was like, ah, maybe I'll grab a beer. I'll take one of each. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, a Red Bull and a beer. Yeah, that was my moment where I was like, oh, okay, this is awesome. <laughs> you know? yeah. Does it help you out or is it just kind of part of the I whole, think it's just um, I'm like anything else. This. Like, you know, like. Um, it gives you a jolt to the system. It changes you up. Yeah, yeah. Just changes I'm, the way it just mean, changes it up. Yeah. Yeah. It was it's weird. It was, yeah, I'd never done it before till then. I even asked Charlie, I'm like, what do you think? She's like, I don't know. I was like, oh, okay. It's just something different. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's... like if you're stressed or you're thinking about. At that point, I you're like, probably anything quit will help. this thing and then you <laughs> yeah. take a break and you like you drink a beer and you're like, ah, oh, okay. All right. I, mean, I it's can like, do this. It's probably mm -hmm. like that. Or you go up and do the same thing. You ask the aid station cab and say, look, just punch me in the face. You get that without the without the marking. You know, if you guys do that, then people will be like, I can't wait to go there and get punched in the face. <laughs> Hit him in the face with a stick as he goes through. <laughs> Y'all got to do this, man. It's 31 miles. You get an extra coin. You know, they get a stick. <laughs> but I was going to kick you in the nuts on mile eight. Sometimes it's been a beer. Sometimes it's been a shot of fireball. Sometimes it's been a ham and cheese sandwich. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You yes. never know. You it's never not, know what's going to, you it's, know. It's not. You just don't know. Like I've eaten, I've literally eaten a ham and cheese sandwich. Gone. 
oh, I feel <laughs> yeah. so good right now. How yeah. about that egg, uh, whatever we had at Love It? Love It. Man, the, at mile 27 or something Yeah, the like burrito. That. We oh were at uh, about to go up the, what's the mountain called? Uh, Brady. Love It. Brady Mountain. <laughs> yeah. no, we, were, we were at the Brady Mountain, Brady Mountain yes. aid station. And they were cooking up fresh, made-to-order um, burrito, breakfast burritos. Oh, Like man. real yeah. potatoes. Like they were chunked. You had eggs and cheese. And this thing had to have been at least like 1,000 calories. Took it down. Man, it was amazing. The next mile, we pre- basically was like this slow hike up the hill, burping the whole time. But after that, I mean, it was like we had hours of energy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it was a so huge it, investment. So it didn't work on the way back through, though. I got <laughs> another one. When you turn around and come back, again. I was like, I'm going to give me another one. It no dice. It was like, this is not feeling so good. <laughs> not jiving. It is, it, it's almost impossible to re- recreate a energizing yeah, it, uh, yeah. ingestion yeah. of some kind yeah. of food. Yeah. Like some. we've all had that. Mountain Dew or that Fig Newton or, or that like, chicken noodle soup or that beer or that shot of Fireball yeah. that you're like, oh, yeah. And then the next time around, it's like, yeah. eh, mm-hmm. no it's way. It's not working anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed watching um, the people that discovered the pizza rolls on yeah. that DRA station, yeah. you know. And um, I was hoping this year I was going to have like the little burners underneath to keep them warm. We're going to do that. So, um, did Boo I'll get those that. from the aid station? She Is did. that what happened? Because she had a little pouch <laughs> yeah. and she talked about it for like three weeks she afterwards, her pizza roll pouch, where yeah. she'd be running and open her little pouch. And and it was so funny to see the people walk through and be like, pizza rolls. And some of them would grab it. And they were like, these are, you know, they come back through and then they grab like a massive handful. It's like, pizza rolls, this is stupid. Uh, this, yeah, these are stupid. This, They're cold. Wait, wait no, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, mid chew. They're like, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> you had those at Tunnel Hill too, right? I and that, did. That was the one uh, thing. That's probably the first time I've heard of, heard. About. I did. It was late in the race, and I like saw my wife went to the gas station. Yeah, to you told her you were like going out to the out and back like, turnaround. Yeah, yeah. And she showed up. She goes, "All I could find was this." pizza rolls so all they had was this cup of pizza rolls and i was like oh <laughs> i was like this the, you couldn't have gotten anything better than this right. and i like ate those things and i was like let's go like yep. i was i was on fire like i was like let's. we should try like taking the mcdonald's cheeseburgers and punching them out as many cheeseburgers to set up oh, for everybody. oh, oh man, yes. man. Cut them like yeah, cut Get them one or, pickle yeah. per little punch <laughs> oh <laughs> yes that's the size that's of the a, burger punch, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah, you, yeah, there you, you go. If you got to add the pickle, yeah. it'd be worth it. You just got to do it. Yeah. You might have to get some extra pickles, but like do one pickle per yeah. burger. Yeah, yeah. per, per one, little. Yeah. Four, four pickles per burger. And I'll, be in, charge, I'll be in charge of eating the rounded corner or the star <laughs> areas that get cut out. All the There's got to be a, a formula that could be put to that. <laughs> but that's what I was talking to Brian again before the before the show about how – you know, with y'all's nostalgia and everything that you could, there's so many good vibes coming from it that you can, you can eat a pizza roll anywhere. You can take a shot of fireball anywhere, but you get enough people like in a good place, having a good time talking about shots of fireball and pizza rolls and things like that. And then it becomes a reason like Mm -hmm. a destination. It's justified. It's justified. It's awesome how that works, man. And you can't really do that unless you have community. Right. You know, it's not important if if two of us go somewhere and we eat a pizza roll, we're probably not going to go back the same year to, to eat a pizza roll together. You know, when you got 300 people talking about going and getting that pizza roll, that makes a good time, man. Um, but also, I think it's something, too, like being able to camp out before the thing. Like Yes, <clears throat> I think so, too. Like, you see the campgrounds are packed. Like, that was the way it was at Village Creek. That's the way it is at Big Hill Pond. It, the, like, the can't, you can't find a camping spot. And so people, even if they're coming for their first race or uh, uh, they've been racing, like, the just the whole story of I got there the night before, put my camp side up, went to pick my packet up, did the thing the next day, went back to my campsite. You know, we had a fire that night and everyone's doing all this. That's... It's like yeah. way better than any of these, any of like other races you get. Like, you know what I mean? I'm well, imagine if you yeah. did that at Tunnel Hill because that was the. I think that was probably the first time I'd camped at a race, and I was up there That'd besides be awesome. my friends. Yeah, was uh, you know April didn't go with me that time, and I was just kind of up there camping by myself. But I knew it was going to be cold, so as long as you take a heater or something and make some, uh, take some measures to stay warm. 
Camping tw- at Tunnel Hill. It's 20 fun. degrees at Tunnel Hill. You need more than a little heater to camp out. There's no way. I'm out. <laughs> I, know, I know you are. <laughs> I, I, I like the hotel thing. I like the hotel thing. <laughs> yeah. I love you, to camp, not for a race. But I think what I'm saying is you get more store. Some people will like to yeah, stay in, be the, stories. in the hotels, but other people will camp and have those experiences where they're writing about it on their Twitter and their blog and all this stuff. Or you don't get that from the road race right. thing where You're you exactly just show right. up and go, I'm running this road race and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't <laughs> been out in the parking lot before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, so even the overflow, though, we've, we add uh, porta potties to the overflow camping and there's a big giant chimney for a fire and yeah, they've added some covered area right over there as well, so you can get out of the weather if you want for for I mean, it's for for our race. Yeah. So, but porta guys, potties are key. Porta potties are key. Porta potties are key. You guys, there, but you guys do food and drink very well, like way better than most races I've been to. I think, like those burritos are. Fire. Yeah, excuse uh, me, yeah. but nacho are really good. Dude. Yeah, El, oh, El Guadalajara. Good guys taking care of doesn't get much better than that can we talk about your injury you mentioned your injury yeah yeah i'd be how, glad to talk about it yeah how's that tell us about it oh you know it ha- um of course i can't really pinpoint exactly when the major damage happened but i knew that the symptoms that once i went into the ortho and was like look i'm not going to stop at an x-ray I want you to look at an x-ray, and if you tell me that that's it, just go, you know, get a steroid, uh, not a steroid, a cortisone shot or something, you know, do some stretches. I'm not going to believe that because that's like I have a problem. And so luckily for me, my um, swelling was so bad and what they call a, a bursa sac on the uh, the inside or the medial side of the ankle, and it would protrude almost like half size of a golf ball. You know, like the, like if you took a golf ball and cut it in half, that's kind of what it would look like after a long run or after a race. Mm-hmm. And it would go down after a couple of weeks, and, and I could get back to doing some moderate stuff. But any time I had a long run at all, it would just, just be a fit. And I just – it got to where I was really having to force myself to run, and I was like, it's not fun anymore. But anyway, so they saw the inflammation on the x-ray, which um, Dr. Beard was my uh, general uh, sports medicine doctor there at, at uh, Campbell's Clinic. And he said – I'll be honest with you. I've never been able to see um, this inflammation on an x-ray like this. So he's like, I'm definitely ordering you an ultrasound. So came back like a week later, did ultrasound, and then he was able to diagnose the tear and showed it to me and stuff. So it was it was pretty bad. And then got set up for surgery and did an MRI, and, and they found out that they had the – I guess there's a bone spur on either side of your heel, and I guess that they can get inflamed or distorted or something through all that activity. And so he had to go in there and also shave those down as well. So it was an expensive process, but um, I can tell, like I have not had the same problem on the inside of my heel. It's kind of gone to the outside, but I'm only getting it when I try to build. Um, you know, I've only been running for about maybe six weeks now. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about running is really loosely a real loose term. Cause I mean, I had, you know, 11, 30, 12 minute mile is all I can get with a walk run interval. And I'm not setting up any type of that's one thing I've I promised myself not to do is I'm not giving myself any pressure um Brian and Denari and everybody else has been kind of like hey you're gonna go sign up for this race and all this it's like no I'm not I'm not signing up for anything I'm just taking 2021 I had a race that deferred you know the Ironman the half Ironman in Memphis in October it deferred so I said you know what I think a triathlon triathlon training would probably be great to come back through out of my rehab and do that. And so that's kind of what, what I've been going on. But I'm not taking it serious at all. I'm literally running twice a week. I try to make it to the gym when I can. When I was in rehab, I was going to the gym twice a week for two hours at a time and doing therapy type stuff. And that was really helpful. And then now I'm, I'm just running twice a week and trying to do some ice therapy. And I get April to take my foot every now and then. But it's been a long road. But you're on the mend. I'm, like I'm on the mend. I'm on the mend. It got rough there for a while. Um, I'd say right after walking tall, man, I don't know what happened. I was taking some nerve medication or something, but it just got bad, man. I just, I didn't really want to be around anymore. It was just so bad. Really? I didn't that really. Bad. Yeah, yeah, it was really bad. So not even the ankle so much as just your whole state of mind was My bad. whole state of mind was gone, and I had no way to get rid of any of my stress or any. Man. There was no release at all. That scares me to death. That, that 
that stuff scares me to death. Having having battled with depression before, the fear of going back into that or, or having some sort of injury that prevents me from the kind of self care that that I need mm. is it's scary stuff. Yeah. I got pretty in a pretty bad way mentally. So that's one thing to consider is that when in the doctor told me, he's like, are you sure you want to do surgery? And I guess my surgery was a little more invasive because he said, if you want to get back to the ultra running that you're wanting to do, the only surgery you can have besides the, whatever they, you know, they got plenty of names for these things and I'm not going to even try to pronounce them, but they go in and, and cleaned out the decayed. So what had happened was basically I had uh, tendonitis and over time, because I didn't allow it to heal, it became uh, tendinopathy. And so at that point, it will not regenerate. It'll It's just decayed material. And so I just had 30% of my Achilles was just this decayed mush. Oh, man. So they went in and flushed it out, you know, in a certain procedure. And then they um, cut my – the two tendons go into your big toe. They cut one of them and shortened it and – reinserted it into my heel as a helper tendon next to the Achilles. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that part of it was what was so invasive and what caused me to have such a long. Recovery. I mean, tendons don't have a lot of blood flow, so it takes a really long time for that to heal. And the, all the nerve damage that happened from that. Plus when they put me in my, in my soft cast after the surgery, I don't know if they just wrapped it up too tight or what, but the swelling, my foot was pretty much numb anyways. But coming out of the soft cast, I realized how numb my foot was. And it had done a lot of nerve damage on the outside of my foot for no reason, really, just from the cast not being cast right. Uh, so my therapist said that I think you get a third of a millimeter of growth every 10 days for nerves. And so if you want to think about that, that's how long it would take to, to you know. I still have probably about three or four spots in my foot that are numb. And... It's just going to take some time. Yeah. Well, you said uh, because you didn't allow it to heal. You said that a second ago. Well, like, is that a thing for like for other people? Yeah. If you have an injury, would, it's better to just say, I'm I've just not going to. I've tried to pass that on to some friends of mine that I know um, that kind of have the same mindset as me and just, you know, want to keep going, take a couple weeks off. I would say that if you have a physical swelling sign that continues to come back is chronic it's the same pain. You know, everybody gets tendonitis. But if you allow enough time to heal, for because it will heal, if you allow enough time to go by and not have another race stacked up for that pressure, right. I, that's that's one thing I learned from this is that races should not determine whether or not you run. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they should just be uh, a happy ending, if you will, to your, to your training process if you make it. So don't let the – that would be the only thing I've learned is, is that I'm not pressured by a race anymore. So I, I loved, I learned that I loved running too much and I needed it in my life because it was my crutch. It was the only way I was dealing with demons and everything else. That was, uh, when I lost that, I pretty much lost it. Felt like I lost everything. Do you feel pretty passionately about holding on to this mindset in the future? Or do you see yourself getting to a place and being like, okay, now I can go strongly towards I think, races. I think like you just before. have to, if you really want to get to that place where we're talking, you know, trying to run a decent hundred mile or something like that, you have to just understand your commitment's going to be three, four, five years build up to it. You just yeah. have to understand it's right. going to take that long yeah, to commit yeah. to it. Yeah. I'm going to drag him into it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys want me to, he's like, hey, are you going to uh, sign up for Upchuck again, this year? And I'm know, like, I don't even have a qualifier for it. What Upchuck about next right week? Now. Yeah, we got, exactly. <laughs> we got another. So it's, it's been long enough. Right. You feeling better? Yeah. Luckily, Brian, I Brian's like, I don't understand what's wrong with your foot. I gave you an Ozarka water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why can you not run this race? Is that Chuck the one in Chattanooga on Sunday? It's been 10 out? days. What about that? I want to do that someday. It's a great race. I it do. If really I could really ever get back race. to my running the way I'm supposed to, I'd like it's to It's a race Chuck. worth doing. It is absolutely worth doing. One of the few point to points. And it's, yeah. there's a reason why it's got a qualifier. Yeah. Yeah, you got to grab a sub seven fifty k to even make your way into the list. Really? That's, Whoa! Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's insane. I'd like to, even at my best. I don't think I could probably. You said that uh, that's the Ozark Trail hundred. Is that what you said? That's the Upchuck no, Signal up Mountain, Chattanooga. Okay, gotcha. So that's nice. small too. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to have a qualifier, and only, they take seventy five people, I guess, and that's it. Yeah. Just two buses full, and then they're done. <laughs> Yucky. We'll leave the registration timeline out of it for fairness to everybody else. <laughs> you got to go find it for yourself. It's worth doing. 
especially well, if you like Chattanooga trails. When I had my knee surgery, it was there wasn't my recovery wasn't anything like yours was, but there was in my experience wasn't anything like yours was. But I do know the feeling of kind of gratitude that when you do come back and you start moving around a little bit and you're like, if the options are I can work really hard and risk being injured or I can just kind of enjoy this more than I used to and be a little bit more grateful about the fact that I can move around at yep. all. That's it. Uh, you know, it's really nice. It's really a pleasure and a, and a gift to be able to get out and move around on your own capacity. Yes, it is. Um, at whatever speed for whatever distance. Yeah, especially if you deal with things like addiction or any type yeah. of mental, dis- you know, mental issues. You don't realize how much exercising and how much yeah. being able to just get that heart rate up and burn that crap out of you. Yeah. It, how much it helps. Mm-hmm. So when you can't do that, when you can't get your heart rate up over like 120 or 130, you know, literally they said, I was like, can I go swim yet? Can I go swim yet? And they're like, no, you can't get you, you know, because of the swelling, you can't get your heart rate up that high. So I said, okay. I mean, it was January before I was really clear to swim. No, oh, man. Well, guess what? I have a review-ish, kind of. I have right. an email that I received. It wasn't Let's a review because the guy doesn't have iTunes. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. This guy's from uh, from Australia. Whoa. From our friends down under. How many stars did he give us if it was stars? Well, you'll have to read. It you'll was have to upside listen down. Up. It was a minus five. <laughs> <laughs> review went the other direction. <laughs> hi, hi, Wilson and crew. You guys are really fun to listen to. I'm a truck driver in Western Australia. I run a bit when I can. I don't lift much, but I do a few body weight exercises. I have done four half Ironmans, but now all I have time to do is trail running. I like how you guys just sit down on the couch and talk life. Have a laugh with each other and at each other. You're a breath of fresh air in today's politically correct society. Love how you tackle the big issues like do you tear off the labels from your new clothes or cut them? <laughs> tear. <laughs> we, we had that conversation. I like how sometimes you know a lot about something, but then other times just keep taking shots until it sounds right. <laughs> yes, man, you got it. I like this guy. That's so, my man. What was that guy's name? So, so funny. The other day you were talking about... <laughs> about but we're talking about, would you rather have 50 DMX years or Prince Charles oh, years? God. He said, you're talking about Prince Charles, but I'm pretty sure you meant Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> when he passed away. <laughs> Prince Charles is probably coming in our YouTube channel right now. Yeah, yeah he is. You guys are so stupid. One star. <laughs> it wasn't even Prince Charles. I'm still alive. Or maybe he's not going in there. He said, you'll maybe have to show this to, to Vaughn. It is... Must be something about that part of America that a few triathlons and running po- podcasts are around you. C26 is a tri podcast. Big Ass Runner is a podcast from Dallas, but they seem to talk about events near you guys. I would leave a five star review, but I have a Samsung, so I don't have iTunes. I downloaded Stitcher, <laughs> but right. couldn't work on how to leave a review there. Keep up the good work. It's real, man. And thanks to you for <laughs> keeping me awake, real. Darren Bromfield. Oh, wow. thank you, Darren. Thank That's you. awesome. That was great. That it's always awesome. nice to get those kind of So things. I was going to ask Darren if he's listening or if he catches it later on. I recently caught uh, some type of show that's like, you know, you have ice road truckers. Yeah. yeah. Well, in Australia, they have trucks that literally have to go a couple weeks driving. And, I mean, they are some long, long rigs and, like, huge amounts of fuel. You know, usually it's like the husband and wife are kind of a team driver. What are they carrying? I just anything and everything. I mean, it's just like getting cargo over to, I would think the you know the more desolate areas of, of the outback, and so they have to cross a lot of these areas. And I'm just curious if if he's kind of a more of a metro driver or if he's one of those guys that actually gets out there and does those long those long hauls. Are those long hauls have like minimal aid stations per se? Or are you saying <laughs> this is like through rough territory that self supported? I think. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about these guys got Water the fuel drop. tanks are huge. The, it's got like extra set of axles on the truck just because of how much it's got to t- take. I mean, huge, like three trailers stacked yeah. up next to each other. I mean, behind each other. And then they make a big convoy. And But it's uh, it. when I saw it, I was like, I don't even know if I could really bring myself to do that. Yeah. It was just a... Did you was, say water drop? Yeah, they got a water drop <laughs> out water there drop somewhere. Out there. That's a mile 16. <laughs> so anyway. This <laughs> water is Body crazy. glide and, a, and an Ozarka. If he does that, kudos to him. <laughs> I think <laughs> someone used this body glide already. <laughs> but Brian took me out to Shelby Farms one time and ran me until I almost 
died. I was like <laughs> seeing stars. And I was like, man, I'm fucking dying, dude. Like we got to do something. And there was this water non, truck. There was non like a, potable water it truck. It said on it non <laughs> non potable water. And I was like, I don't give a shit what's in there. If it <laughs> kills me, that's fine. I got to have something to drink, man. I'm over there, like, trying to unscrew the damn cap. <laughs> the, the truck driver comes up. He's like, don't goes, drink that shit. Man, you can't drink that, man. You cannot drink that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Man. Well, what? And Brian's like, we're just right around the corner. Well, I took <laughs> six miles. Listen, I, I took him for his first trail run at Stanky Creek. <laughs> and he was supposed to run like four miles in his basketball shorts and ran like 13 miles because he got lost. So. I got lost because they stuck around for literally – 38 seconds. Pops. There was it's never there was never once like a you good? <laughs> what happened to Wilson, man? It was just that was it, man. I guess he's okay. He'll be fine. There's I was only one trail on, out here. I was still on pavement. <laughs> you can get stuck in that little circle. There's like a little two mile circle out there that you can just keep it's like, how do I get you off of this ride? Yep. You know, it just <laughs> I know. That's where I was. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, man. those stories out there are pretty wild. Oh, I was gonna ask you guys. Near uh trophy or whatever that you got did right. we talk about that yeah, on the I, podcast i brought mine today we we both got one um but it's all thanks to the chamber Brian, of, vaughn's gonna knock it over <laughs> and it off the <laughs> we <laughs> both have one <laughs> <laughs> now you'll have to share <laughs> yes. uh but I, I don't know i i can kind of explain it but brian can't you, you probably uh, the the background behind the tourism award as far as i mean you know with the chamber and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can do at least that good. <laughs> okay. I just can't. No, that's, that is the uh, Tourism Visionary Award this year from the Chamber of McNary County. And they gave that to us because uh, over the first three years of our race, we have brought people to visit Big Hill Pond State Park from 32 states. Um, and so that's just an award for... The work we've done at the park and the tourism, the money we've brought into the chamber, um, just kind of just just yeah. honoring us for doing it. And the cool right. thing is, is that Big Hill, this is how big Big Hill Pond is such a big deal in McNary County that this is the second consecutive year that Big Hill Pond has been a part of it. I think Justin uh, Ranger, uh, Justin King got it last year, got this award. And so, um, you know, we were very humbled by it. And it was a very, it was a huge to do. I mean, as a, as in my business, I go to a lot of chamber functions for, you know, local municipalities and counties. This one, uh, was top notch. I mean, it was the, it was the annual award dinner for everybody. And so it was a big to do. And, you know, they had like a planetarium set up and they had live orchestra, orchestral music. And, wow. Cool. Uh, really cool dinner. Um, and it was just, I mean, it was all to the nines. Awesome. Guys, we got three minutes. Either y'all can talk about something you want to talk about. Hypotheticals. Or I got some, some deep deep knowledge, <laughs> deep thoughts that I want to put into this. We can get into the deep thoughts. Okay. So, I was driving around with Andy today looking, going all over God's green earth to find audio cables at Best Buy. And so we started talking about some things. And I asked her where, in, if she could do anything in the world, what would she want to do? Where would she want to go? What would she be on a quest for? She Andy's says, a mini me. You've got to understand Andy's a mini me. She, she uh, Wilson. How did, yeah, very true. And I'm about to prove it by saying this. She I said, know. I would go in search of the world's greatest sloppy Joe. <laughs> So it made me think, for one, made me realize how much I love that girl. But what would you go and search? What food, what food, if you could travel the world in search of one food, and so you had to eat this food and look for this food and travel for this food, what would it be? Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers. Yeah. I'm a chicken wing guy. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. Oh, yes. Chicken wings. Right. Yes. Drummies are flat. I should have said chicken I couldn't wing. care less. Couldn't care e less. Either way. Hot sauce, fried. Hot sauce. I, like I love all the different sauces. I like it. The hotter, uh, the better. Just try just, them out. Yeah, just try everything. Brian's so much cooler than I I just like <laughs> pl plain pasta that, that I don't, you know, I've never had before. Like different shape pasta. I don't know. Just I, like, I like chasing the pasta that I haven't had before. So these are all such interesting, wonderful responses, Amanda. Well, mine's dumb then. My, uh, Steak, the best steak ever. Oh, no, no. that's far from done. That's, 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 that's you ever had the old 96er? That's the anti dumb. You got to eat the gristle. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I cook it super extra blue rare, I'll, t I'll eat it. 
we're gonna we're gonna what do y'all call washing machine style? We're going back this way. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Could it be on a sandwich menu? Yes. Uh, it'd be on a sub menu. A sub but sandwich. not a sandwich. That wasn't the question. You got to stick <laughs> to the parameters. You know how this works, man. You can't just it's go jumping dog. off things. We're I'm gonna trying say, to stick. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say no, it can't. No. I'm going to say no as well. You got to have two, two pieces of bread. It has only got one pieces. connect, that's two separate point. pieces of bread. So. That's, a good, the, that's a good that's, point. I'm in that boat. A hot yeah. dog is a hot dog. It is a thing. Like you can have all kinds of different hot dogs. You can have all kinds of different sandwiches. Hot dog is a hot dog. It's a one piece of bread. I'm going to tell you how, to, how good of a job you did on that. I would have argued that, that yes, it was a sandwich until I heard both of y'all speak. What about me? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's what America. You shut up. <laughs> that's what America needs to do more of. That's is right. listening to listen, arguments like listen this. To opposite but it's between arguments. two pieces of bread. That's a sandwich. Yeah. And it's not it's two one piece of bread. Well, it's there's one the, piece of bread. I mean, it tears apart all the time, and you no, know that. So it, it tears apart. Only when two it gets wet. And, and, and oh. it's called a hot dog. Only if you have a loser. sandwich. Sandwich yeah. can be a bunch of different yeah. things, but a hot dog's a piece of meat. It only falls apart if you have a loser <laughs> make your hot dog for you. He's got a foot long over here, apparently. <laughs> My hot dog's big. I mean, Sonic ain't got nothing on his boy. <laughs> Is cereal a soup? No. It's a breakfast soup. What Whoa. was that? Who? <laughs> I didn't get that. Can your you phone try is. Ah! Ah! Stop oh, it. I didn't get it either. No. It, no, uh, that's that's my time's answer. up. <laughs> you shut up, computer man. <laughs> <laughs> Lift every run long number 207 is in the book. <laughs> See ya. Oh, man, that, was, that, was, that, was that was creepy. <laughs>